free day to drive a convertible, isn't it? No, I'm kidding. Of course I am. It's a dreadful grey day and, well, I didn't bring a full convertible but the Abarth 500 convertible with the kind of tent roof which I really like because it doesn't have the downsides of a normal convertible and you can just uh, open the roof a bit when the, the sun starts shining and uh, I really do like this kind of roof. Okay, anyway, as I said, the Abarth 500, the new one, well, I shouldn't call the 500 because uh, everybody kept calling it the Fiat 500 Abarth and they wanted you to call it the Abarth 500. So now they've named this the Abarth 595 Turismo. Well, the Turismo is the um, the spec or the edition of the 595. You have the normal one, the Turismo and the Competizione. And you have some Bipostos, which is the crazy um, special limited edition um, version. But I'll explain to you what that means in a few minutes. Let's just walk around it because it hasn't really changed much. Um, there are the facelift elements you have on the normal 500 like these rear lights which are a bit different because this now is in the body color. Um, here you can see the badge reminding you that this is a 595 and not a normal 500. Uh, we got this car from Vireo, very kind of them to lend us this really cool Abarth. I really don't like these rims, I, they look a bit toyish to me. They are 17 inch. When you have a normal Abarth, the 145 version, you get 16 inch rims, these are 17. And this is the front and I do think the front really looks very cool because let me turn the lights on then you get the best impression of the front yeah the lights are on okay because I think this looks cool this looks like an angry little car and you also have the fog lights in the body kit. They look really, really cool with the wide looking and low looking lights of the Abarth. I think it looks really, really cool. Um, I do think it isn't that much different from the old Abarth 500C. So yeah, they could have done a little bit more, I think. Because even these rims, which I don't like, they're from the old Abarth 500. So if you don't want us to call it an Abarth 500, make it much more different instead of just subtle little things. Okay, let's get in and let's see what it's like to drive. <laughs> okay, subtle little things from the outside. But in here it's... It's a bit better, I think, because the look and feel of this Abarth 500, 595, is better than the old one. The seats really nice, this is the Turismo version, and then you get leather seats, which look really good. Um, the support, however, isn't that good, but then you should get the Competizione edition, which is the third power version in which you get the sabled racing bucket seats. What I do really like is the gear lever in this one because um, the normal one has this fat gear lever which really isn't very, uh, very good or very nice to handle. And this really is, this is just a classic bowl on a stick and that's just what it needs to be in a car like this. The steering wheel is really nice, it's adjustable in height so you know you can get a acceptable steering position because it's not really that good because it should be like this but my knees are a bit in the way I can't um, uh, adjust it in depth so 
it's a bit tricky to get a good sitting position mainly because of the seats which are too high and the steering wheel which is not adjustable the way you want it to be so um, you know you're just looking for a okay seating position okay let's start it up and let's see what it's like to drive I'm going to start in non-sport mode and this review in this review I can compare the um, the Turismo edition with the Competizione edition because uh, Vireo Auto, the dealership of which I got this car, they also have a tuning company called Savali, which is a very old uh, Alfa Romeo and a Barth tuner. And they now have given me the uh, Competizione spec, so the 180 horsepower on the sport mode and the 165 on the non sport mode because they are basically the same engines with different software. Okay, let's start with 165 HP. So that's the Turismo version. And because this is the Turismo version, it means that I have normal uh, Abarth dampers on the front and Kony dampers in the back on the rear axle and if you have the Competizione you get four Konis you know front axle rear axle and if you have the standard uh, base level Abarth you get just standard dampers all around I do get why they did only the back in the Turismo, only the rear axle, because this car is known for its tricky tail. Um, when you lose it, you'll probably lose it over the rear axle because it can be a bit um, weird in fast corners. So I think they changed it or upgraded it with the Kony dampers um, but I do have to say this is for people who really like to take their Abarth to the Nürburgring or to a track day and then it gets useful to have Konys instead of the normal dampers you know on a road like this in conditions like these you know it's wet it's cold you're not going to need them Okay, so the engine, it's the 1.4 turbo um, from the older Barth. Um, it then had 135 HP. You now get 145 as base level, 165 in the Turismo, and 180 in the Competizione edition, and I think 200 in the Bipostos, which just are crazy expensive and not very relevant because of it and as I said there isn't a difference between uh, in terms of hardware between the Competizione and the Turismo version and the guy who tunes uh, these cars software tuning says but let's just start with the 165 ponies because I think it's quite enough. This car, actually, for its size, you know, it's it's really nice and fast. Picks up very good. It has quite a lot of torque, actually. You know, you don't need to shift down a lot. In fourth, through the corner and it picks up really nicely and the steering I am now in not in sport mode and I think this is the way it should be it's it has some way to it it's not too light not too heavy you get a bit of feel it's really nice actually 
and the whole car actually feels very nice to me because I've driven the old 500C and it was very very wobbly it wasn't very rigid and the body stiffness of this 595C is really much better than the old one because the old one when you uh, entered a corner it was very wobbly very insecure and this is so much better so they did a good job there okay now let's switch to sport mode and this wasn't me I wasn't pushing the pedal it's just the the torque that makes it accelerate you know this is a bit of throttle push sport and there it goes okay we now have competition power which means 180 Man. look how this thing goes with 180 HP in third push it that's I think that's pretty crazy for such a small car With the competition, you also get a Monza race exhaust because this one, yeah, it's a bit quiet, I have to say. And you also get the Sabolt racing seats, as I said. And then the seating position should be a lot better. But the power, man, it's really impressive. It really, really is. So standard, the uh, Abarth 500 with 145 HP, it does 0 to 100 in 7.6. The Turismo does 7.3 and the Competizione does 6.7. So that's quite a difference. Okay. pressure meter it the pressure is a lot higher than in the non sport mode let's check it out let's just push it in second and let's do it again in sport mode okay watch the turbo meter you know that's like one or one zero point eight now get the sport on <laughs> you know it got in the red zone between 1.4 and 1.6 let's say 1.5 bars of turbo pressure that's a lot and it feels like a lot because the power the, the power delivery is quite aggressive and the the amount of torque it manages to generate is very impressive okay since this is the convertible version I will open the roof although it's raining a bit I do think it's a very cool roof As you might hear, it does give a lot of wind noise. And then you notice that it's not a... Wow! <laughs> the ESP had to kick in there for a second. Okay, it's a bit noisy. I'm going to close it again. It needs a louder exhaust to... push the wind noise down so as you see in these conditions this car with 180 HP can be a bit tricky if you try to push it because the front axle really can't handle the power in these conditions because of the short wheelbase and because it doesn't have a limited slip diff it is optional 
on the competition edition. So, if you're going to drive it in the wet and if you're going to drive it on a track, get the competition edition, forget the other ones, and maybe order the limited slip diff as well. And if you're just about the looks of the Abarth and you like the the interior, the way the engine pulls, but you don't want it to be hardcore sporty, then the Turismo version is best for you. Thank you for watching this POV review of the Abarth 595C and that's a cool dog. Uh, and let's see if I can get my hands on a uh, competition edition, you know, with the uh, crazy loud exhaust and the sable racing seats. And um, well, let's see if the weather will be better then. I'd sure hope so. Thank you. Bye.